continuously remains in one's own mind or emotion, then your digestion will suffer, your sleep will suffer, through that way your physical, uh, physical body eventually is a suffer. So, when we talk about violence and non-violence, I think we should know the deeper level is negative, uh, positive or negative emotion, uh, positive such as compassion, sense of care, sense of concern, these are positive emotion, uh, brings <coughs> benefit, benefits. This negative emotion brings more harm. Once with that, once you know that, then we develop some kind of attitude. Uh, uh, of conviction. Some of these emotions are harmful, not only harmful for others, but myself. These are bad. So once you realize that, you will not, Kasoda, charging, you will not have the negligence about this negative, uh, or say, harmful, harmful emotions. Usually, we say, we consider these emotions. So through this realization that the negative, uh, the, within the, the domain of emotions, there are two sex, one, the negative emotions which are harmful to us, and the other, the positive emotions which are beneficial to us. So simply through realizing, even at the level of realizing this fact, then you naturally have a closer inclination towards the positive emotions, and a little, a little bit further away you'll go from the negative emotions. Generally, I think in this country, I think religious tolerance is really remarkable. So perhaps I think they, oh, in I think in modern time, Mahatma Gandhi has even struggled through non-violence. Of course, there are other sort of factors also involved, uh, but I think one one of the ma major factor is India's thousand-year-old non-ahimsa principle. So, uh, he implemented that in the 20th century for freedom start. I know, wonderful. So, I, I want to, sh uh, to tell you, the younger generation, uh, on the basis of these background, firstly, you need self-confidence. And with that determination, willpower, and of course as an equipment, as an instrument, modern education, plus your own traditional value, this must go together. And with self-confidence and determination, I think uh, you can make you can make a great contribution for not only betterment of India but also, I think, whole Asia and the whole world. So, long future, essentially open, unpredictable, uncertainty. But I think future, looking at you, your better contribution. So, keep in your mind, long future, Think about India, think about humanity, and think your potential of contribution, and work hard. Should not do lazy. Good. Thank you. Uh, about whether Gandhi is still relevant in the kind of violence we see today, which is mindless violence, not like the violence we saw during the independence struggle. Uh, is it relevant? Another is about India's own policies, which are encouraging the trend towards a consumerist society. This cannot be reversed because of the poverty in the country. Uh, how can we manage this without sacrificing our 
cultural ethos which rejects materialism, because this is what Your Holiness had referred to. Uh, the second part. So in Buddhism, there is the mention of the four factors for prosperity. So there, uh, we when we speak about non-violence and the 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 Buddhist or the Indian precious ethos, we don't mean to relinquish the concept of accumulating wealth and so forth. So the four, four factors for prosperity. Or for prosperity, uh, one for immediate benefit. That's wealth. One long-term benefit. That's moksha, nirvana. Uh, in order to gain the first goal, money. In order to to gain, the, to get the long-run benefit. So that's four factors. So that means people who believe spiritual value not necessarily give up all the well, prosperity. Now the prosperity for community, prosperity one individual, I think desire prosperity to the society or community, I think that's very right, very necessary. Here, no need of practice of contentment. Prosperity, one individual. Because if only increase greed, greed, then it will uh, lose your peace of mind. Therefore, for individual prosperity, it is because of one's own question of right, because no. question of one's own peace of mind or health. You, uh, it is wiser to practice contentment. No. So this also is reduced get rich and poor. Global level, society, national level. Now look in India. Now, there are millionaires. How much? How many billionaires in India? So in any way, a few individuals, like in America, I think they get huge gap, rich and poor. Austria, and some of these European countries, the middle class, that's the biggest number, so they get less. I think that's healthier society. Huge gap, not good. Even those richer families, wealthier families, they themselves, mentally, uh, not necessarily very happy. So they, we human beings, social animals, more equal. Uh, I think I think better. Therefore, uh, I think one, the method to reduce get rich and poor, not law, doesn't work. Look, former Soviet Union, and also China, so-called socialist country. Now in China, in both China and Russia, who would you get rich and poor? Uh, so these are very unhealthy. So they, I think, real arms, real sort of method, I think, within some kind of self discipline on the basis of better air. So, contentment, the individual case, very relevant. To the society, to the country, I think discontentment is very relevant. <laughs> a specific question on this, on Islamic fundamentalism, which appears to be a, a threat to uh, peace and security. How should other faiths adjust to the question of Islamic fundamentalism? 